Today we're going to be talking about some new revelations in the text to image generation space. In this video we're going to be taking a look at some brand new text to image generators that are really really good. We're talking image generators that actually compete with and beat out stable diffusion in a lot of cases. So the image generators that we're going to talk about in this video are known as GANs. GAN stands for General Adversarial Network. Basically, this is just a deep learning model that can generate images from text. This might lead you to believe that Stable Diffusion or Midjourney or Dolly 2 are GANs. Well, actually, those are not GANs. So, this is known as GigaGAN. And I really love the name here because it makes me think of that GigaChad meme. Anyway, so it makes it pretty obvious here that Stable Diffusion, Dolly 2, and Google's Party are different from this GigaGAN model and the fact that those are not GANs and this one is. And they're saying, can we train a GAN on a text to image task? Here's the thing about GANs, they are fast at generating images. While Stable Diffusion and Dolly 2 and all that, they take time to generate slowly. I'm sure if you guys have used Midjourney, for example, Midjourney can take like a whole minute to generate an image sometimes. Well, here you're getting outputs at 0.13 seconds, and that's, that's sort of the thing with GANs. They are extremely fast, and we'll talk about the implications of that in a second. Another great thing about the GAN models is they're known for their continuous and controlled controllable latent space, which means that these images that are being generated with certain prompts are easier to manipulate. Before we take a look at these image demos, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by, would you look at that, NordVPN! Most of us by now have heard of the amazing VPN service, NordVPN. Honestly, viewers, I've used NordVPN before, and it's the best one out there. Not only does it allow you to browse safely and securely, the user interface is incredibly easy, and with this simple click of a button, you are safe. And not only are you safe while browsing by keeping your data secure, you're also opening yourself up to content from other places in the world. You see, NordVPN allows you to access content from anywhere. This includes TV, this includes movies, this includes video games. And to be honest, viewers, this also includes certain AI technology as well. If something's blocked in your country, you can simply switch on NordVPN, which allows you to choose from over 5,300 servers in 60 different countries. And if you're worried about speed, check out this test. Yeah, that's my internet speed with NordVPN on. You can watch 4K content or download games at the speeds you normally would be downloading them at. And that's what I love about NordVPN is it's a no compromises VPN. It has all of the features and everything you need. And what's best is they sponsor videos like this. If you click the link down in the description below, you'll get access to an exclusive deal on a two year plan. Check it out, link in the description. We've got some image demos here to take a look at. Obviously the main one here is this very painterly image of what is a human growing colorful flowers from her hair. And that really is what is depicted in the image, I would say. Hyper-realistic oil painting with intricate details is definitely seen in this rather high resolution image too, by the way. This is a very high resolution generation. We've also got this golden luxury motorcycle parked at the King's Palace. Definitely the King's Palace in the background. However, I would say the motorcycle is less than desirable for an output here. This motorcycle is not a great generation. Not very coherent compared to something I would expect out of Midjourney or even a nice fine-tuned stable diffusion prompt. We've got some more examples which aren't too bad here I would say but a lot of these you know the straight lines aren't really doing too well in these images and they kind of look blotchy and not fully realized. We've got a cube made of denim on the wooden table here. This is by far my favorite prompt. I don't know why. I guess I just love these surreal objects generated by AI. However then we see this disentangled prompt interpolation and this is where GigaGAN really shines. They're simply able to change the texture of this bear for example they generate an initial image here at the beginning, a teddy bear on a tabletop, and this gives them the basic layout of the image, and from there they can essentially edit it over time with different prompts, and we've seen this before with Stable Diffusion, however this is built right in and the GANs are very very good at this. So they're able to change the different texture of the teddy bear just by changing the prompt, and it completely maintains the rest of what you would expect for the image, barely changing the background. 
And it's not, you know, barbecuing the image, for example, or creating weird artifacts or anything like that. It's just nicely and smoothly changing the image and the texture of the teddy bear. You can see another example over here where the entire style of a house can completely change. However, it maintains the size of the house and a lot of its main features. And in this one, they also show off that you're able to change the time of day and the lighting and the prompt as well. And that also works out very well too. We've seen similar technology to this, no doubt with stable diffusion, but GigaGAN is very good at this. And keep in mind, it generates an image in 0.13 seconds. That is very, very fast. There's no waiting around. And the news actually gets even better with GigaGAN. As you can see, upscaling is also possible. So you can take like a super low resolution image like this 128 by 128 pixelated mess and actually upscale it into this beautiful 4K masterpiece, which is just insane. I mean, this, this upscaling is really really high quality stuff and it does it all in less than four seconds so we're going to take a look at a few of these up samplers because this is really probably one of the more mind-blowing aspects of this whole model really really is able to extract some fine detail out of a blotchy mess and you can see it's it's really adding detail where it needs to be and again this could be cherry-picked results you know this is probably one of the best ones that they ever got right and all of their testing of this model but it's hard to deny the results here. It's really some fantastic work. We've also got an example with a dog here. And again, this one is honestly kind of hard to believe. It looks like this is the one that came first. Like this is the original image. And then this is them compressing that image. But nope, apparently this image has come after this one. I, I don't understand how this is even possible, to be honest. There's almost no real texture going on in these super low resolution images. Yet it's able to pull such a coherent image out of it. And again, this is what this GAN model is especially suited for. I mean, check out that detail. Absolutely ridiculous. There, it's almost flawless upscaling, I would say. This one, this is a more unrealistic image as a whole. This is more of an artistic image, and it does a fantastic job with this as well. I could even see mid-journey images being tossed into this GigaGAN algorithm and uh, see them get upscaled into this more lifelike quality, because it really, really is good at this. This is better than mid-journey's current upscaling. I mean, V5 has yet to release, but this is some darn good upscaling. As human beings, we know what a face is supposed to look like, so how does GigaGAN handle upscaling a face? A little bit of weirdness going on there, I will say that, but it's pretty flawless. There's a little bit of weirdness with his teeth, a little bit of weirdness with the eyes and, you know, around the watch and stuff, but the shirt is phenomenal. The rest of his arms look pretty good as well. The skin is really good as well. The facial hair is not too bad. This is a particularly difficult human to upscale as well because of all that facial hair and, um... Yeah, it did a pretty darn good job. It's not perfect, though. Not perfect with the human. Here is another human test result. Again, screwed up the eyes a little bit. The mouth and nose look a little off as well, but the hair looks pretty darn good. And again, the clothing is pretty phenomenal as well. Another more fake image here, something that would be a little bit more artistic. And it did an all right job with this one. I would say this is one of the more poor results from the generated AI upscaling. Now this is particularly difficult to do as well because there's a huge water splash coming out of the trunk of the elephant. So not only does it have to actually render an elephant correctly, it's got to connect that whole thing together with the water sprouting out. And it does a shockingly good job. The elephant's a little screwed up in some areas, especially with the tusks and around his eyes and stuff. And, and a part of the trunk does look like an alligator's foot or something weird like that. But the water looks astonishingly good. So I think it handled this one pretty well, all things considered. But this is one of the more screwed up ones as well. But it's probably the most difficult. And then we've got something simple and easy, just some home decor to be upscaled. And it did a pretty phenomenal job with this. And again, they explain in more detail some of this prompt mixing. So we start with the basic prompt here and then add different textures to the same object. And you can see this is, again, a huge strong suit of this model. The biggest advantages of this definitely are the speed of generation and the upscaling along with that prompt morphing. But for a basic image generator, it ain't half bad. All right, now we're moving into this secondary model. I'm not going to focus too much on this one because it's not as impressive. 
And there isn't much information on this unless you want to go through the entire paper, but this essentially is style GAN T. Again, this is another GAN model. So remember, what are the benefits of the GAN models? Well, first of all, they're extremely fast. And then we saw the upscaling advantage in the previous one, along with that style transfer. Their disclaimer here is that every frame in this video morph that we're about to watch was generated in 0.1 seconds, which is lightning fast. That means that this generation can generate 10 frames per second in real time at a resolution of 512 by 512. That is a heck of a lot faster than Stable Diffusion. And Stable Diffusion was lightning fast when it came out. So let's take a look at this video. This is all about the style transformation and slowly changing the prompt over time. And you can see this is some pretty impressive stuff. But remember how fast this would be to generate. You could probably generate this whole video in about 10 minutes or so, which is pretty astonishing. So again, there's pretty low resolution in this video, I apologize for that, but you can see it does some alright image generation, not as good as GigaGAN, but this is technically faster generation than GigaGAN. So there are some applications to this that we'll get into later that uh, you, might, you might want really fast image generation for. You can see the fog rolling into New York here. It's pretty cool stuff. It reminds me of the earlier GAN models, which we'll talk a little bit about. We'll touch on those, but in general, it goes back to the original prompt. It's some pretty cool stuff. These models are, they generate a lot faster than Stable Diffusion, Dolly 2, or Mid Journey. We'll just say that. The breakdown on the differences between something like Style GAN T and GigaGAN. GigaGAN does upscaling. It's much higher quality generations. It's still very, very fast, but Style Ganty, it technically is the fastest to generate. I think it's also really important to point out that these GAN models, these GAN image generators are actually older technology, technically speaking, than something like Dolly 2 or Stable Diffusion. They were actually out before. Here on Night Cafe, you can actually still generate with these older GAN models, such as VQ GAN plus Clip, and this is a very artistic model. It's very creative, but it's not coherent at all. So things like Style GAN T or GigaGAN are essentially an updated version of these GAN models and really show off that they can be just as good as Stable Diffusion and are also really good at a few other things. So we can't forget about those GAN models and they're definitely going to be a part of the image synthesis future. Well, this is going to help us generate text to video in the future a lot faster, I, I definitely think. That's one of my predictions. I mean, this is a pretty darn good image and it was generated in 0.13 seconds. So how fast could you generate, you know, a 60 minute movie? It might only take a few hours to generate that in the near future using GAN technology because of how fast it can generate each frame of the quote unquote movie. And that's at a pretty high resolution as well. 512 by 512. So 10 years down the line, we're going to be we're going to be seeing some pretty crazy technology emerge. I also always love to imagine the future where we can step into a quote unquote hollow deck, right? And you can talk to an AI interface that generates imagery in real time. So you can Think of this like applying textures to AI generated 3D models in real time. You don't have to sit around and wait for things to generate. They just appear as you ask for them. So that's another feature of fast generating text to image models. These lightning fast GAN models are also cheaper to run because they put out more images in the same amount of time. So when you increase your efficiency like this, you greatly reduce cost. And the fact that Stable Diffusion is so popular despite being technically worse than Mid Journey in a lot of ways shows you how good a cheap model can be. When Stable Diffusion came out, it was the most efficient model out there by far. But these new GAN models are really showing Stable Diffusion who's boss in terms of how quickly and efficiently they can generate an image. So one last question we always have is, can we try out these models for ourselves yet? Well, so far it appears no, we can't try them yet, but the architecture is clearly laid out in these papers. So at some point in the future, this technology is going to be utilized and we will be able to try it out and use technology with it. So it's more than just a paper, really. This is furthering the development of this AI technology. It's exciting stuff. Check out the channel, check out my other videos, and thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. See you guys next time.